Uh, good morning. Uh, it's a privilege to be in front of you today. And I'm honored uh, to be with the uh, distinguished uh, speaker. Uh, magandang umaga. Ayan, ang pagbati sa Pilipinas. So, it's a way of greeting you good morning. And uh, mabuhay. Mabuhay kayo lahat. Alright, uh, I'll be uh, sharing with you language that are very important in the field of human resource management. So I hope you can listen and pick it up and use it in your own conversation. Okay. So I'm really passionate about uh, HR. I've been uh, working for 20 years now, and more 90% uh, probably of my work is related to human resource management. Uh, because I was a former consultant for management, and then I later on I noticed that uh, I can never be uh, good because I realized that it's all about people. They're the ones who will commit. They'll be the ones who will work, and they'll be the ones who will accomplish the goal. So if we really want to accomplish our MDGs, our SDGs, we need to invest in people. Right? So these are the objectives. Uh, I'll explain to you the strategic human resource management, and describe the steps to take to attract, retain, and motivate its people. Discuss how organization can succeed in changing times. All right. So what do you see? Muscle. Muscle. Muscle from? What is this? Yeah, the whole? Arm. Arm. So that is actually the definition of HR. It's arm. All right? A stands for attract. R means retain. And letter M means Motivate. So that is the role of people. Let's try to simplify things. No? Just always remember your hand, your, your arm, and that is really the definition of each arm. Simple, right? Okay, I have a question here, but this is not for my students. Alright. Right. Uh, your people is your greatest asset. True or false? Again, your people is your greatest asset, true or false? True. All right, wrong. <laughs> the answer is true. All right, why? You need to manage them well before they can be your greatest asset. All right? So this is attract, retain, and motivate. So you need to arm yourself to attract, retain, and motivate people. You need to dedicate your time, especially in healthcare. In our country, our nurses are leaving. I don't know with you, okay? We're losing also our doctors. We need to retain them. But you know, we cannot buy them because the, third world, uh, the, the first world country is buying them more than what we can give them. That's why we need to strategize, to innovate, to retain our people. Okay? So, let me give you the definition of HRM. It is activities that managers engage in to, to attract, retain, and motivate employees to ensure that they perform high level and contribute to the accomplishment of organizational goal. So it means that, look at the big word, managers. So it doesn't mean that it's only the work of the HR manager. As long as you manage people below you, you are all HR managers. So if there will be problems with people, you don't ask for the HR manager to come. You should know how to attract people, 
as a supervisor, you should know how to retain and motivate. Because you will be the one handling people face to face. All right? So it's very important for the HR to train all the managers, to, to train all the supervisors. Okay? So that they'll be equipped in attracting, retaining, and motivating people. Let me define the, human, the strategic human resource management. So it's the okay. It's the process by which managers design the components of HR management system. When I say HR management system, these are hiring and selection, training and development, performance evaluation system, and works and recognition. And they have they have to be, there has to be what? Creative fit between the organizational architecture and the organization strategy and goal. You have to create strategic fit. If this is the strategy of the organization, you need to fit the HR system with it. Okay? Alright. Let me show you a framework. And this is what we call the HR value chain. Okay? So there are three dimensions in the HR value chain. Number one, you need to be efficient. So we look at the HR activities, and we need to be well-versed, expert in HR. You are efficient and you are effective, it should be felt in the impact. Okay? So, for uh, private uh, entrepreneurial uh, enterprise, they're looking at profit, market value, market share, turnover. But for government, we have to start from the bottom. We need to look at moral values, fairness, legitimacy, equity. Customer satisfaction. Okay? Those should be the impact in organization. Another framework. And this is what you call HR value chain as well, but it's more advanced. Okay? It is looking first at an enabling environment. Okay? If you want your HR activities to be effective, you need to invest on in it. There has to be budget. If you're not training your people, I can already predict what kind of institution you are. Okay? So there has to be an enabling environment for you to work on your HR activities so that you can feel the outcome and you can measure it using the balance scorecard, where you look at the financial KPIs, the strategic focus, the customer KPIs, and the process KPI. All right? Now, how to find and attract? No? Uh, we've been mentioning about attraction. How do you attract people? Number one, you cannot just post and pray recruiting strategies. It doesn't work anymore. Okay? You need to create a funnel of talents. You cannot just, if you're hiring for a nurse, you're just posting your bulletin board. No, that's not work anymore. You have to gather, you need to multi-source posting, proactive outreach, proprietary talent work networks, aggregate sites, organization sites, referrals. You need also the digital networks. Okay. So all of this will create a funnel for you so that you will have more options in hiring talents. Okay? You need to be an employer of choice to attract people. Okay? Um, what do I mean by an employer of choice? If you can see the trilogy here, when I say trilogy, it's the mission, vision, and core values. You have to live it every day so that you can have a, an employer brand and people will come to you. You need to be a magnet for employees. Alright, 
So some poor practices and best practices in hiring and selection process. Poor practices, hiring only when you have an opening. That's a poor practice. Overlooking the skills your organization will need in the future. If, you don't, if you're not strategic, you can never find this. All right? Indulging in irrational optimism about attrition, succession depart, uh, depth, and recruiting yields. So what are the best practice, practices? Conducting or going to active analysis of future needs. Okay, again, creating a funnel of people. Continually evaluating the pool of potential talent. Develop a rigorous periodic forecast of the company's talent needs. So these are needed, okay? And then, you need to specify the job. You need to define. Uh, you cannot just offer, you cannot just look at the internet and find a job description there, okay? You cannot use generic competency models. You need to define your own competencies. When I say competencies, what are the knowledge, attitude, skills? habits, experience, and values of people. What do you need? If I am to replace you, what will be the right person to replace you? Right? Develop the pool, okay? And then assess the candidates. Setting for the first adequate choice, looking endlessly to the perfect choice, using the wrong interviews, you know? When you do interviews, you, you follow the star. Right? What is the meaning of the star, the student? Situation, task, action, results. So when you do interview, you always follow the star. You don't ask for, if you will be a superhero, what will you, who will you be? That's not. Okay? You base it on the competencies of people. All right, retention. How do we retain people? Okay? First is you make sure that your people are competent. And there are two ways to make them competent. Number one is technical skills and the adaptive skills. You have to train them. When you say technical, it's about management, about uh, financial management. When you say uh, adaptive skills, they have to be a good leader, great leaders. Human relations. No? They have to have a high IQ and EQ. Okay. So high potential employee, a high potential employee is someone with the ability, engagement, and aspiration to rise to succeed in more senior critical positions. Okay. Next. Now let me share with you this motivation seven. Uh, I was the one who spoused for this uh, theory, and I used this. Alright, so first is, you need visibility. You need to give people work that are feasible. Not too easy, but not too difficult. Okay? Feasible. That's it. Number two, you need to provide people that they can grow and they can achieve their ideal self. There has to be a succession plan. Okay? For example, if you want, and if I want to be hired in this uh, institution, my ideal self will be the director of this institution. Okay? Is there a way for me to be promoted? Okay, so look at that. Number two, and number three is reward fit. Yeah? The intrinsic and extrinsic rewards. Right? You need to tailor fit also the reward. There has to be a reward fit. Number four is control. No? You give people trust, but make them accountable. Huh? You cannot micromanage them. Okay? They won't be motivated. If you are micromanaging them because they are not effective, it's your fault because it's your, you're the one who hired this person. Okay? Next is challenge. 
Okay? You need to challenge people. Huh? You need to take them away from their comfort zone. You need to stretch them, but not to the point of stressing them. All right? You can stretch, but not to the point of stressing them. Okay, you will be the HR manager. You will also be the deputy director, and you will also be the QMR. No? no you, do that. All right? you can stretch them, you can challenge them, but not to the point of stressing them. Next is fun fit. It cannot be work all the time. There has to be balance. No? You have to look at the health of people. There has to be spiritual, mental, social, and physical. All right? And the last is self-development. Okay? You need to support people to be competent enough. So this motivation set programs likelihood that you will achieve the goal. All right? So rigorous HR. We need huh, to build a rigorous HR. What do I mean by this? No? So when I say rigorous, you have a lean and mean HR. So how do we do that? There are four ways and four ways. Okay? First B is build. Train and develop current employees. Okay? Because sometimes you're always complaining, how come this person is not working well? How come oh, I'm, he's so problematic? Did you train him? All right? So those are things that we need to understand. Number two is why. Okay? Recruit talent. You know, I do recruitment outside if my organization is not a learning organization. But if it's a learning organization, then I'll hire from within. But if it's not, then I have to buy from outside. I need uh, people who can challenge the status quo. Okay? Borrow. Uh, use temporary help. No? You need alliances, consultants. No? If there's no available competencies, then we need to borrow people. And the last, boost. Retention of top talents. All right? When you say R, you attract the best talent, retain the best talent, and motivate the best talents. There is no room for mediocrity. All right? So you should earn the seat. No? What, what do I mean by this? Uh, you should elevate the position of each R. It has to be an advisory, a staff position, who will give advice to the CEO, to the director, to the president. All right? So how can you achieve that? You need to be strategic, efficient, aligned, and tactical. All right? You can't improve, but you can't measure, you need to be your tracker. All right, this is HR outside in evolution. The, this is the scenario right now. Before, we are here, no? HR administrative utility. We're just designed to hire and fire. That is the role of HR before. But now, there is HR functional expertise. We are good at hiring and selection, compensation, training and development. But then we move to strategic HR, wherein uh, we need to tailor <coughs> our HR system with the strategy of the organization. But now, this is the future of HR. Outside, in. Rather than looking at the mirror in your HR strategy, you need to create window. You need to look outside. You need to talk to the community. You need to talk to the government. You need to talk to the investors. You need to talk to the customers. And then, Get all their ideas so that you can be better off as HR. Alright? Okay. Now, to do this, to be outside in, you need 10 criteria. First is the HR direction. We need to create values huh? in everything that we do. That's the number one. Huh? 
What is your value? What are the value adding process that you're adding in your processes here in Indonesia? Next is the two components of HR relationship in business. You need to be an outside oriented leader. You need to know what's happening on the political, economic, social, technology, environment, and legal. Next, you should know your stakeholders. Who are the people who will help you in your programs, in your projects? All right? You need to be friendly with them. You need to create um, trust building dialogue with these people. These are the three targets of HR. Organizational, you, you should look at the culture. Individual talent. You need to be a rigorous, you need to have a rigorous talents also. And the common denominator is a great leader. Okay. So for domains of HR investment, we have HR department, HR practices, HR professional, and HR analytics. You need to invest on this four. Is it time already? All right. So we need to invest in this four. Okay. So why am I saying this? If you engage your employee, there is a causal relationship in the increase of your performance. Okay. So once your employee are satisfied, the customer are satisfied. And of course, it will gain you an increase in profit. Okay. Tolerate nothing less. I have a few more slides left. Okay? Once you engage your customer, what will happen? They will become your evangelists. If they are dissatisfied, they become your terrorists. They will hate you. But if they are satisfied, they will love you. Okay? So, you need a vivid vision. Okay? This, this is what we need to focus on. Over-communicate the vision. You need robust communication. You need to cascade as a leader. You need to cascade the, the communication. No? You need to translate the vision no? down to mission, quality policy, quality manual, up to a storyteller, training programs, notes, circulars, newsletter. You have to over-communicate the vision. Okay? Everyone should understand it from the top to the bottom. You need best people. How do you define talent? Highly competent, impeccable character, excellent communicator, positive attitude, creative, innovative, risk tolerant, strong drive, solid team player. If this is your talent, if you're the leader, you need to double it. There has to be sense of urgency. Okay? You and then the four levels of decision making, you should own your decisions. And then there has to be disciplined execution. When you say you will do it, do it. Okay? And then you listen to the voice of the customer. Alright? So that you will be effective. Alright, so you master the five, vivid vision, robust communication, best people, sense of urgency, disciplined execution, then focus on number six, extreme customer focus. Alright, so let me leave you with the story. This is the common story. It's about a young boy and he asked the mother, Mother, may I ask you a question? Mother said, sure, why son, is there something bothering you? Why do camels have humps? <coughs> well son, we are desert animals. We need the humps to store water and we are known to survive without water. Then why are our legs so long and our feet rounded? Son, obviously they are meant for walking in the desert better than anyone does. Okay. 
Why are our eyelashes so long? I'm a boy. Sometimes it bothers my sight. Son, those long thick eyelashes are your protective cover. They help to protect your eyes from the desert and sand and wind. I see. So the humps, my humps, my humps, is to store water when we are in the desert. The legs are for walking through the desert, and these eyelashes protect my eyes from the desert stand. <laughs> then what are we doing in this? All right? Or of the story, our talents are only useful if you are at the right place. Question is, where are you now? Thank you.